Here it is. I wish I had somebody holding this, but I only have two hands. So let's let's do the, the grand unveiling together. Oh, that's one way of getting it to go off. Let's have it slide off the edge of the table. Okay, so there it is. And there's the power supply. Wow. That's a big ones. That's a big one. Yeah. A nice little bank of transistors right there. I'm sure they're all MOSFETs. So it does look like uh, it's pretty easy to take things apart if you had to. This, this looks like it'll just lift off. So, from this angle. Nope, not seeing anything. Let's go down the other alleyway of this, and oh, what's this? Oh, what do we got here? Get another angle on this guy. Yeah, that is a bulging capacitor, if ever I've seen one. And typically, when you have one, there's usually another. That's not a guarantee, of course, but that's usually the case. Now, this one next to it feels okay. No. And so does this. It looks alright. It feels okay. However, we're gonna, next time you see me, I'll have this out and down on the uh, bench in the shop and take it out. This guy, this capacitor right here, he said with an extremely large finger. And, um, we'll take it out, check it. Throw it out, put in a new one, check the others, check them for ESR, and uh, my guess is I'm going to be replacing all of these in this immediate area. I'll check the traces and see where, where this branch is off to in terms of the other capacitors. If, uh, if, I, if I see the same trace bouncing off from this to this and this, then they go. Out they go. Okay, so here is the Samsung slash Philips power supply for that big uh, silver Philips I just showed you. And um, so here are the capacitors in question. And they are this one. The board number on it is C8059. Now there's another one tied through this uh, coil, goes through it to here as well. And um, this is C8060. And again, 3300 microfarads, 10 volts. A um, couple of the forms I read say, all you need to do is replace both of these and you're golden. So, we'll see if that's true. I'm going to take a look at the rest of the circuitry and see if the same uh, power feed that feeds these two capacitors is uh, branching off into the, some of the other ones here. And we'll go from there. And we're going to change the capacitors. We've got some brandy new crap. Capacitors in. I'll show them to you in a moment as soon as I get my solder tips installed. I'm using this uh, broad chisel tip, 800 degrees. So, I'll let the feet up. Now 
now the dealer that has the Sanyo capacitors for this. Um, 3300 at 16 volts. Hoping that the camera is focusing in on this. I can't tell right now, but or I'll hold it down here. Hard to see the writing on it, I know. But. Let me get some of my Ampec flux on there. I try not to get any of the flux on my hands because uh, if you happen to rub your eyes with it afterwards, boy, does this thing. It'll let you know. Okay, so. Yeah, this seems to be going well. It looks as though this particular uh, circuit board was made with uh, standard <coughs> lead and tin combination solder <coughs> as opposed to the uh, lead free solder of the later circuit boards. This, this stuff is melting pretty quickly. And, uh, yeah, I'm picking it up with the wick very easily. bit more solder out. Oh, that one just dropped. I heard it make a clunking sound. There's that one. I'll put it there. All right. So, so I do want to check them. Curious, always curious before I replace what I know is bad. I want to see what the value is. So this one isn't so bad. It wasn't bulging, but I'm pretty sure it's not any good. It was right in line with the other capacitor. Put it on the box, see what it says. Okay, so it's reading 3732 microfarads. V loss 2.2%, ESR 0.09. Okay, let's see how that compares with one of the new ones. Thirty-two seventy-one. Uh, v lost two point three percent. ESR point four. So uh, besides the actual value of the capacitor, it doesn't seem to be reading all that bad, which is surprising. Me. But this isn't the really bad one. I'm going to show the really bad one in a moment. 3745 seems unusually high. It's rated for 3300 microfarads, not 
37 hundredths. Um, so that's suspicious, the fact that it's reading so, so high in value. And I also have a, another uh, capacitor meter that I could try it on. Well, yeah. <laughs> this doesn't even... Uh, what is this telling me? It thinks it's a diode for starters. And, um, yeah. 259 microfarad. But it's given all sorts of strange readings. This is the one that's bulging. Let's take a look here. I've got another meter here. Hopefully the battery is still working. Yeah. So. Let's see what this is. EK says. Okay. Yeah, but, oh, that's right. It's beyond the scale. Well, probably not beyond the scale of this, though. Let's try this. Okay. So. This capacitor should be throwing off the scale because this particular meter only goes up to 2,000 microfarads. Um, and it's only showing 1,400. And this meter doesn't really account for any uh, voltage uh, discrepancies that might be happening in there. It's just. And this one, of course, goes right over. Okay, so. I wish I. I wish this could read beyond 2,000, but it doesn't. Okay, so again, here are the, the two capacitors I just replaced. Um, I'm looking at the circuitry. Um, there's some uh, diodes here, and some rectifiers, and they also, uh, this is a separate circuit, but they have the same habit of what they're doing here is they're that they have rectifiers and they're using these air these capacitors as fil main filter caps uh, after they come off the rectifiers so what I'm gonna do is uh, pull these guys out these other three and take a look at them check their readings and maybe just replace them so I'm going to put the phone back in its uh, little cradle so you can see me do that. So, yeah, one more flux paste on these other three. This is hidden. No, it's a thousand mics at ten volt. So in that case, we can use this particular meter to check it. Seems to be reading okay. Well, no, actually. Hold on. 944. Eh. Technically, it's okay, but mm, I don't like it. And I have replacements, so guess what? That's going to get replaced.
Okay, so here's the finished item. The Magnavox TV with the Samsung power supply. And um, here it is for its final test. I'm going to turn it on. It does take a little while to kick in and turn on, but there it is, working just fine. And I uh, have run it for a while and uh, Hold it up just fine, no problems. So that's the repair of the Magnavox slash Samsung power supply. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.